What is up everyone? This is Leon. Hope you all are doing well. I am very excited tonight to be doing my second horror collection video. And today we're going to be taking a look at some of my UK editions. So these may be a little unfamiliar to people in North America. To my friends from across the pond, maybe a little less so. Uh, so originally I was going to do just uh, my Hamlin and Star books, but as I was going through my bookcase, I came across some other uh, smaller imprints from, from the UK, so I thought I'd throw those in here as well. Um, I tried to get everything. Uh, I'm sure I, I'm bound to have missed something here and there. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the space to keep all of my collection sort of categorized or classified by imprint. In a perfect world, I would add everything sort of uh, very neatly structured. So I'd have, you know, all my leisure books together, my zebra books, but it's just not the case. Things are all over the place. I'm sure I missed something here. I'm sure the moment this video is finished recording and uploaded, maybe even as I'm putting these books back on the shelf, I'm going to find a couple uh, that I forgot to include. But what can you do, right? So uh, the first publisher that we're going to take a look at is uh, Star. Uh, they are one of my favorites because they have just uh, some really striking and outlandish covers. So the first book from Star that we're looking at today is The Fungus by Harry Adam Knight. This book was published uh, in 1985. Uh, Harry Adam Knight actually is a pseudonym for the writer uh, John Raymond Brosnan. Uh, he wrote a, a bunch of genres, I, I think science fiction primarily, and uh, he did like to write pulp novels. And he had a sense of humor, because you know, if you uh, think about it, Harry Adam Knight, uh, what do those three initials spell out? Hack. He also wrote under uh, the pen name Simon Ian uh, Childer. Simon Ian Childer, yeah. And uh, that would make sick. So yeah, the guy had a, had a sense of humor. Love this cover right here. I mean, just look at that. That is just so in your face, like the best uh, UK paperbacks. Another one from uh, Harry Adam Knight. We've got Slimer. It's a, it's a cool little, uh, this one's kind of like an alien type, uh, type story. And then we've got Carnosaur. This one was made into the uh, uh, Roger Corman uh, movie he adapted in the 90s. Roger Corman was very savvy and uh, bought the rights to this as soon as he found out that Steven Spielberg uh, bought the rights to Jurassic Park. Although, interestingly, uh, Carnosaur was, was uh, written and published uh, before Jurassic Park. So, so who, who copied whom is the question. Okay, next we've got a uh, Graham Masterton book. I love Graham Masterton. This is The Gin. Uh, this was published uh, by Star in 1978. Next up, uh, we've got a book called Blowfly by David Lohman. This one was published in 1984. You'll notice that a uh, lot of animal attack books, uh, these things were just being pumped out in the UK and in the US, but after, uh, after James Herbert's The Rats, that just kind of opened the floodgates and you had like every variety of animal, insect, they were all, they were all making it onto those grocery store racks. Okay, next one is a uh, plasmid by, uh, although it says Joe Gannon, uh, this is kind of an interesting one. Uh, this book is actually a novelization uh, to a film that was never produced. So Joe Gannon uh, is actually the screenwriter of the unproduced screenplay, I believe. The, the actual author of the, the book that I'm holding is Robert Knight. I don't know why they uh, attribute it to the screenwriter and not the, the writer of the actual novelization. Uh, they do that in one other book uh, that I'm going to show you here. Next up, we've got Robot by uh, Peter Grimwade. This was published in 1987. Okay, next, we've got Fatal Glimpse by Robert K. Wilcox. This one was published in 1981. 
I kind of like that that cover. This was actually um, published by an American uh, publisher, I think, with the same cover. I, I can't. Uh, I don't know who it is off the top of my head. Maybe might be Leisure. I haven't read this one yet. I haven't read a lot of these yet, by the way. It's not like I've read all these. Um, yeah, here, here's another one, uh, As Evil Does by John Tiggs. Uh, this one was published by um, Star in 88, although it was originally published by Leisure in 87. And this one actually has the exact same uh, cover. So I don't. there's not much difference between this edition and the Leisure edition, as far as I know. Next up, we got my boy Richard Lehman here with Flesh. Uh, this one was published uh, in 1987. And this is probably one of the better uh, Richard Lehman novels from the 80s, in my opinion. Fun, fun book. And then we've got uh, the British version of Richard Lehman, uh, Sean Hudson. And this is probably one of his better known books, Slugs. This is the first uh, edition of Slugs, published by Star in 1982. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of, you know, animal attack books, but this one, this one's really something special. It's just outrageous, just over the top, gory, just a fun, gory, good time. The movie's fun, uh, cheesy fun as well, if you're into that kind of thing. Then we've got Erebus. Uh, this one was published in uh, 1984. I, I really dig that cover. Um, a lot cooler, I think, than the Leisure version. All of these books were also published by Leisure, uh, and I, I usually, I usually go uh, prefer the the UK uh, editions. If I if I'm being completely honest, they just they had cooler covers, They're just more in your face, more graphic. Okay, another Sean Hudson uh, book. This is Victims, uh, published in 1987. <laughs> and I think this is the one. Uh, let me see. Yes. Just look look at that author pick of, of Mr. Hudson there. What a goddamn rock star. Jesus. Just badass. And we've got Chainsaw Terror. This was, he published this one, uh, or he, yeah, he wrote this under the pseudonym, uh, Nick Blake. I did a review of this earlier. Um, this one was published in 1984. Probably one of the most violent books I've ever read. And we've got uh, Relics by Sean Hudson. This one was published in 1986. And finally, because I am a freak and a fanboy, <laughs> you know I had to get uh, the novelization of The Terminator when I found out that Sean Hudson had wrote, written a novelization of The Terminator. Uh, this was uh, published in 1984. No shame. I read this and I enjoyed it. All right. Uh, okay, next we're going to be taking a look at a few uh, titles from New English Library. So uh, first up... Uh, we've got a, one from Richard Lehman. Lehman. Uh, this is Out Are the Lights, published in 1982. I'm trying to get it so there's no glare. That's kind of a cool cover. Then another Richard Lehman book. Uh, this is Beware. This is one of his uh, rapier titles. Uh, this one uh, was published by New English Library in 1985. I always love a good Invisible Man, killer Invisible Man uh, book. Okay, uh, next, Eat Them Alive. This is quite an infamous one by Pierce Nace. That was a pseudonym. Uh, for a long time, no one had any idea who this author was. And then it was finally, uh, it finally transpired that it was some uh, old little uh, lady, a Tex Texan, I believe, a Texas lady who published just a bunch of stuff. Uh, and this one is... One of the trashiest things, if you get a hold of this, one of the trashiest things you'll ever read. Just ridiculous, uh, really crap, uh, crappily written, if I may say so, but entertaining. Uh, they really don't publish stuff like this anymore, that's for sure. Um, this one was uh, published in 1977. 
Okay, next we've got uh, The Undead by Guy N. Smith. This one was published in 1983. Then uh, a couple of novelizations. We've got The Incredible Melting Man by Phil Smith. This was published in 1978. The movie is pretty awful, uh, but it has really cool effects, uh, really, really cool uh, makeup, um, and I, I enjoy it. And then we've got Piranha by John Sayles. Although here, this is another one. Um, so this this one was published in 1978. John Sayles is the screenwriter, not the. I don't know why they do that, and I did not write. Uh, I, I was remiss, and I did not write the um, the name of the writer, and I'm not gonna take any time to, to look at it right now. So, uh, but yeah, this is a you know classic uh, B movie novelization here. Okay, uh, next we've got a few uh, titles from Arrow. One that I'm not too I wasn't too familiar with them. Uh, here's another novelization, uh, Return of the Living Dead. Written by John uh, Russo uh, in 1985. John Russo is the uh, the co-writer of the original Night of the Living Dead, um, and apparently he originally wrote. Um, it, it has some convoluted history. He he wrote a sequel, um, but then they made the movie Return of the Living Dead, which was totally different from what he had written. He had written like a serious sequel, and you know that one. Anyone who's seen the movie, it, it's a it's a comedy, and then they gave him. They said, well will allow you to do the novelization of the movie. So then he rewrote the sequel, but the novelization, and that's what this is. Although I haven't read this, but I hear it's still quite different uh, from the film. But that's a really cool, uh, really cool cover, I think. Okay, uh, next we've got Maggots, more, uh, more little creepy crawly horror. This is uh, by Edward Jarvis and published in 1986. And then got uh, The Doll Who Ate His Mother by Ramsey Campbell. This, the, uh, this edition was published in 1988 by Arrow, but it's originally uh, was published in 1976. And then the last one from Arrow, we've got Pin by Andrew Niederman. This one uh, was published in... Uh, this edition was published in 82, it was originally published in 81, and this was adapted into uh, quite an interesting uh, film back in the 80s. And then we've got a, a book by Sphere. I'm only, I think I only have one Sphere title. Uh, this is one of my favorite books, uh, John Shirley's Sellers. It's got um, kind of an interesting cover that one, I actually feel like this cover is more uh, better representative of the book than the um, than the original cover uh, by Avon uh, in 1982. This edition was 83. It was originally published by Avon in 82. That one has a weird cover that totally misrepresents the book and makes it look like an animal attack book, and, and it's not. It, this this is kind of more. Uh, I feel like th this this one represents it more. Although I kind of I still dig that Avon the original Avon cover. I have a copy of that. It's so beat up though. All right, and then we've got a few uh, headline books. Uh, more Richard Lehman. I really prefer uh, Richard Lehman's uh, UK editions. Uh, this one is uh, Resurrection Dreams. Uh, this edition by, from Headline was published in 1990. Uh, the book was originally published in '86, I believe. And then we've got All Hallows Eve. Uh, this one was published, this, this edition was published in 1994. It was originally published in 85. Cool cover, but crappy book. Really dull for layman. Uh, I was really surprised I read this last Halloween and I, I was not, uh, not, not really impressed with it at all. Okay, next up we've got uh, The Stake. This, uh, this edition was uh, 1991 from Headline, although it was originally published in 1990. 
And the last headline one, we got Night Show. This one, uh, this edition was published in 1994, although it originally came out in 1984. This one uh, deals a lot with like uh, horror movies and Fangoria, and it's cool for that reason. I know, I know, it's not a lot of people's favorite layman. It's not my favorite either, but uh, it was kind of interesting. I don't know. They all kind of blend together after a while. All right, and finally, uh, the last imprint uh, publisher we're going to look at is Hamlin. Uh, Hamlin is a uh, yeah one of the greats. One of the greats. They have some some great covers. So got a few Hamlin titles here. First one. The Brain Eaters by Gary Bradner. Uh, this was published in 1985. Just look at that. Uh, just look at that cover. See what I what I mean? I mean, the the U.S. publishers were not putting out stuff like that. You know, they were too busy putting skeletons on all their covers. I mean, this thing that is just kind of hideous. I love it. This edition is also also signed, I believe. Yeah. Signed, which is pretty cool. Okay, next up we've got The Tribe by Glenn Chandler. And this was published in 1981. Next we've got Plague Pit by Mark Ronson. This was also published in 1981. And then another Mark Ronson book. Uh, here we've got Ogre. This was published in 1980. I like that. Uh, I do like that cover. Back then, man, they would hire models to like pose. And they would put makeup on models and like take like photographs. Really, really cool stuff. And they'd like light it and like have fog and they they really put a lot of effort into into covers back then. Okay, next we've got The Spirit by Thomas Page. This edition uh, was published in 1981 by Hamlin, though it's originally from 1979. It's a rather sedate cover uh, by Hamlin standards. I hear it's a really good book. Looking forward to reading that one. All right, uh, next we've got The Scourge by Nick Sharman. I'm a big fan of Nick Sharman's. Uh, this guy, one of the underrated writers, I think, of the 80s. Um, he published a handful of books. He's actually a pseudonym for a Scottish, uh, I think he was a guy who like worked for the BBC, but just like was writing these pulp horror novels uh, under this uh, name, Nick Sharman. Um, he started with a book called The Cats, <laughs> which was a blatant copy of James Herbert's The Rats. Uh, but then he wrote some really effective little pot boilers, uh, one called The Surrogate, a uh, creepy little dark tale that I really enjoy. Um, this one, uh, and then he published. He published a lot of stuff. Uh, he's got a lot of signet editions. In fact, I own all of his uh, books and most of them in signet editions. This one uh, I did have in a, in a signet edition. I wish I had it on hand so I could compare it. It is nowhere near as gory as this. I mean, could you imagine like having this on the shelf of a uh, I don't know, like a grocery store. <laughs> I mean, that's what I'm saying. The, the UK publishers, they just made these in-your-face covers. They just did not care. But yeah, check out Nick Sharman if you haven't. I love him. Okay, next we've got Night Killers by Richard Lewis. And this is from 1983. Okay, now we've got some John Halkin books. I'm a, I'm a big fan of John Halkin's. Uh, We've got Slime. This one was published in 1984. Another great cover with a with a model kind of posing uh, here with some some fake slime. Just love how cheesy that is. This is actually a really good book. John Halkin is a is a solid writer. Like his prose is really good and entertaining to read. And then we've got Squelch by John Halkin. This one was published in uh, 1985. And then we've got Slither by John Halkin. I love that cover. Uh, this one was published in 1980. This, this was a, a really fun one as well. Um, 
Okay. Oh, yeah. Here's another John Halkin. This is The Unholy. Haven't read this one yet. This is a little different from the others. Uh, this one was published in 1982. And then uh, next we've got The Unbegotten by Bill Garnett. This was published in 1982 as well. I did a review of Bill Garnett's uh, The Crone uh, not too long ago. Really enjoyed that one. Here we've got uh, some good old-fashioned 80s abortion horror. Gotta love, uh, lot, there were a lot of horror novels in the 80s that, that had to deal with, uh, uh, you know, like angry aborted fetuses. Um, gotta love that. Okay, just a few more here. Uh, we've got Transplant by Daniel Farson. This was published in 1981. I've not read this one yet. I don't know what it's about. And then we've got Nightmare by Lewis Mallory. And this one was published in 1984. And finally, the last one. This is Croak by Robin Evans. And this was published in 1981. I have actually heard uh, pretty good things about this one. This is uh, Killer Frogs. But uh, it's a cool, pretty cool cover. And this one's pretty, pretty obscure. I mean, all of these books are, you know, you're not, you probably won't find these if you're in uh, the U.S. or Canada. I mean, you might, but um, I, I had to order, you know, these from, from the U.K. because these were, these are all published in the U.K. Uh, but yeah, th there you have it, guys. That, those were my, um, as far as I know, those were m all of my U.K. Uh, horror paperbacks. I just love those U.K. covers. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed and, um, you know, I, I hope to do more of these uh, collection videos. They're fun, even though they're kind of a pain in the ass to like go through all my shelves and try to locate them all in various places. Uh, but, um, if you have a request, uh, for, for like a publishing imprint, let me know, you know, I'm open to requests. So what, uh, who do you like, you know, do you, do you want it? Would you like to see like a, a pinnacle video, St. Martin's press? A tour. Uh, I am open to suggestions. Uh, and stay tuned on my channel. I'm also going to have, uh, you know, of course, uh, more horror uh, paperback reviews coming up. I'm also going to be premiering a new segment uh, in the next week or two. So very exciting stuff. Very exciting things are in the works here at Paperback Mania. Uh, so yes, thanks for watching. Uh, what am I supposed to say? Like, share, subscribe, whatever. Uh, have a great night. I will see you later. Take care.